Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay. We're going to use Kurt's notes to talk about a difficult concept, papillary lesions of the breast. At least difficult for me, because of the six main differentials, all six contain the word papilloma or papillary. So before we begin, if you already haven't checked it out, check out Kurt's notes. Kurt's notes. It's such a great resource for pathology residents. All right, let's begin. To differentiate the six entities of papillary lesions of the breast, introductal papilloma, papilloma with DCIS, papillary DCIS, encapsulated papillary carcinoma, solid papillary carcinoma, and invasive papillary carcinoma, you want to look at the architecture. You want to look whether it's well circumscribed, if it's infiltrative. You want to look for whether there are myoepithelial cells within the lesion and with and around the periphery of the lesion. And you can do stains as well, ERPR, as well as other stains, most spe more specifically synaptophysin and chromogranin, neuroendocrine markers that are selectively positive for solid papillary carcinoma as opposed to the other five entities. So let's begin. Introductal papilloma. This is a benign introductal proliferation composed of papillary projections with fibrovascular cores covered by epithelial and myoepithelial cells. They can be central, in which case it's oftentimes solitary, or peripheral, in which case it's multiple. And clinically, a woman might present with serosanguinous or a little bit bloody discharge. And it's important to remember that introductal papilloma can have superimposed usual ductal hyperplasia, apocrine metaplasia, sclerosing adenosis, ductectasia. So especially with sclerosing adenosis, um, it can mimic cancer and sometimes getting myoepithelial cells can be um, a way to differentiate. Okay, let's talk about when you have a papilloma and you see DCIS and then there's papillary DCIS. The way I distinguish these two is papilloma with DCIS is focal, whereas papillary DCIS, the entire lesion is DCIS. So let's talk about papilloma with DCIS first. So it's focal DCIS or atypical ductal hyperplasia superimposed on an introductal papilloma. And when you look under the microscope, you'll see a region that's monotonous, focal, with cytologic and architectural features of low-grade ductal neoplasia, meaning the cells aren't abnormally large. They're not like three to four times larger than a lymphocyte. Um, they don't have prominent mites. They're cookie cutter shapes and they're monotonous. It's important to note that if that monotonous lesion is less than three millimeters, it's ADH. Whereas if it's greater than or exactly three millimeters, it's DCIS. This is different from a non-papillomatous lesion that has DCIS in the breast where the size cutoff is ADH is less than two millimeters and DCIS is greater than or equal to two millimeters. Again, when it's not within a papilloma. And it's also important to note that for intermediate and high grade lesions, there is no size criteria. Papillary DCIS is the entire lesion is DCIS. Um, it looks filiform, arborizing, which like tree, branching like, fibrovascular cores, devoid of myoepithelial cells, but it's contained, the lesion is contained in a duct with preserved surrounding myoepithelial cells. It can be deceptively bland with stratified spindle cells, compact columnar cells, or clear cells, so you gotta look carefully and it's often accompanied by other patterns of DCIS. And the grade is based on the nuclei. As we can see these two different photos, this one appears of a lower grade compared to this one with larger NC ratios. Okay, let's talk about encapsulated papillary carcinoma and solid papillary carcinoma. So first, encapsulated papillary carcinoma, I like to think of it as it's kind of like a cystic lesion. It's well circumscribed. It's got these delicate but pretty noticeable fibrovascular stalks. Um, so 
these uh, encapsulated papillary carcinomas covered by neoplastic epithelial cells within fine fibrovascular stalks of low to intermediate nuclear grade, typically present within a cystic space and surrounded by a fibrous capsule. There's no myoepithelial cells present in the papillae or at the periphery. Circumscribed round mass, typically you see this in an older woman, and it has a pushing border with a fibrous capsule. Despite the name encapsulated papillary carcinoma, it has a very favorable prognosis and in fact staged as PTIS. Um, it's important to look what, for whether there's invasion beyond the capsule with an infiltrative appearance. Then it would be invasive carcinoma, likely of NST. So this is why it's important to sample the specimen thoroughly to, uh, to determine whether it's invasive carcinoma uh, NST as opposed to encapsulated papillary carcinoma because they both have different prognosis. Okay, it, compared to like these delicate fibrovascular stalks you see in encapsulated papillary carcinoma, solid papillary carcinoma, it's, it's more cells with, if you look closely, deli small delicate fibrovascular cores. Uh, the cells themselves are monotonous, round to spindle shape with mild to moderate nuclear atypia and eosinophilic granular cytoplasm. Of interest that it shows often neuroendocrine differentiation as you can determine with synaptophysin and chromogranin staining. And it also can show mucinous features as well. If entirely rounded, well circumscribed nodules, regardless of the presence of myoepithelial cells in the periphery, it's considered solid papillary carcinoma in situ. If there's infiltrating strands or ragged borders, then it's considered solid papillary carcinoma with invasion. And this one has the frequent mucinous features. Um, and solid papillary carcinoma has good prognosis. Lastly, we're almost there. Um, let's talk about invasive papillary carcinoma. This is invasive carcinoma with fibrovascular cores covered by frankly neoplastic epithelium. It looks frankly invasive with infiltrating growth, no myoepithelial cells anywhere in the lesion. It is very rare. And if you do see one, you have to exclude metastasis, for instance, from the ovary or the lung. Thank you for watching. Um, just before we leave, this is an algorithmic approach from say GM et al. Um, this is a little flow chart that's given where if you see a papillary lesion in the breast, first thing you want to determine if, if it's predominantly papillary or predominantly solid. Then you do basal cytokeratins and if it's positive in, within the solid areas, it's papilloma with florid epithelial hyperplasia. But if it's not, then it's solid papillary carcinoma. And then if it's predominantly papillary configuration, then you do myoepithelial staining within the lesion. And if it's complete within the lesion, then it's just the papil your introductal papilloma. However, if it's incomplete or absent, then you want to think about papillary carcinoma. And if there's a complete layer on the outside, then it's papillary DCIS. So um, we talked about introductal papilloma, benign, but you can have UDH, apocrine metaplasia papilloma with DCIS, which is focal DCIS. Uh, the size criteria is greater than or equal to three millimeters for low grade DCIS and ADH is less than three millimeters. There's no size criteria for intermediate or high grade DCIS. Papillary DCIS, the entire lesion is DCIS. So myoepithelial cells are negative within, but in, within on the periphery of the duct, the myoepithelial stains are retained. Uh, encapsulated papillary carcinoma, it looks cystic, it's well circumscribed, it has these delicate papillary fronds, uh, very favorable prognosis. Uh, solid papillary carcinoma, it looks much cellular, solid, expansile, uh, it can have uh, neuroendocrine differentiation, and then invasive papillary carcinoma where it's very rare, it looks frankly infiltrative, and you have to exclude metastasis. Thank you again for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, uh, make a maybe subscribe. And next time, we'll see you next time on Pathagonia. Bye.